every old timey woodworker needs a good workbench. You can't just make your projects on a shop floor. I mean, what are we, animals? I suppose you could use a couple of sawhorses, which may eat and poop less than regular horses, but they lack many of the features that make a good workbench so useful. And while it's pretty hard to make your own horse, I'm fixing to show you how easy it can be to make your own high quality, feature packed woodworking bench. So what size should a workbench be? Well, my 18th century French is a little rusty, but let's see what Rubo had to say about it. The top is made from a sturdy plank or table about five inches to six inches thick by 20 inches to 25 inches wide. Its length varies six feet to 12 feet, but the most common length is nine feet. Many of today's commercially made workbenches are only five or six feet long because they're better suited to the garage size shop. I'm making mine five feet long, 22 inches wide and 34 inches high. The length and the width are just the first numbers that popped into my head, but the height is based upon some complex mathematical formulas. The idea is to be a comfortable height for planing over long periods of time. Some people say to just let your arm dangle at your side and measure the distance from the floor to your middle knuckle. Others say to measure from the floor to the crease in your wrist. I say just go into your kitchen table, pile some boards up on top, and get out your favorite hand plane. Experiment with different heights of a stack of boards until you figure out what's most comfortable for you. So, now that we have our basic dimensions, it's time to talk wood. Southern yellow pine, Douglas fir, or some of the other dense varieties that are found at the home improvement store can make a great woodworking bench. If you're gonna be making your bench entirely with hand tools, the two by six is your friend. Edge plane them down a little bit and you have nice five and a quarter inch wide stock without having to do a bunch of hand ripping. But beware my old timey friend, the 2x6 is often the knottiest, wettest stock in the box store. So you can either pick through piles of boards and find some good ones, then let them air dry in your shop for a few weeks, or go with 2x10s or 2x12s, which are often much drier and have fewer large knots. You just have to rip them down to width. I've got 14 plain 2x6s cut to 5 feet long. So let's lay out our holes. Rubeau's hold fast holes zigzagged across the bench, and I'm sure that worked out just great for him but I'm gonna lay mine out in two long lines running parallel to the edge of the bench. I've found that unless you have really long holdfasts, a five inch thick bench top is a little much. You see the shaft has to protrude at least a couple of inches through the hole and beneath the bench if you're gonna get a good grip. So if you wanna maximize how thick of an object you can fasten down on the top of your bench, three inches is a pretty good thickness. By running my holes in straight lines, I can just rip two of my two by sixes down to three inches thick while keeping the rest of my bench nice and bulky. I like my bench dogs to be close to the front edge of the bench because that's the most comfortable place to do your planing. In fact, I'm putting a row of bench dog holes on the front and back edges of my bench so I can work from either side. And since we're laminating our top together, we don't have to chop mortises anyway. We just cut out our dog holes before we glue our bench top up. Now I've been gluing some of these layers up as I work, but when it comes time to tie it all together, I'm gonna use some threaded rod for super strength. I prepared for it by pre-drilling four holes into each layer before I put them together. Just make sure you drill your holes a little bit oversized. It's murder trying to pound a threaded rod through 22-ish inches of even slightly misaligned holes. One of the most unique features of Rubo's bench design is the way he attaches the legs to the top. He kind of uses a double mortise and tenon, but the outer tenon is really more of a sliding dovetail. All we have to do is make our center layer shorter and we automatically have two tenons on the top. Then all we have to do is bevel the sides of the front tenon into that sliding dovetail shape. Most of the strength in these legs comes from the way they attach to the top. So I have no problem skipping the chopping of the mortises and doing some layering just like we've done on the rest of the bench. This is going to be plenty sturdy. But I'm going to use another old timey woodworker technique and secure them with cut nails. Make sure you orient them with the grain. Otherwise, you're just going to be driving a big wedge into the end of your board. And guess what's going to happen? I don't know. There's just something about building your own tools. It just feels right. 